Hi guys, yeah, McGann. Uh, once again, we are talking about the person who I believe is a vulnerable narcissist that I met on a dating app. This is hopefully the end of this journey where we're going to talk about him. I'm going over the breakup letter that he sent me, well, the text that he sent me, and I just... It's so ludicrous. I, I have to be able to talk and vent about it somewhere. So this is my platform. This is where I'm going to do it because I certainly do not want to talk to that guy again. Anyways, if you have not watched the other three parts of this romantic roller coaster ride, I suggest you do that first. But this can stand alone on its own pretty well. So, you know, you do you. I ain't your mom. Do what you want. So first, I'm going to read the text that he sent me and then I'm going to go back and break down why this is crazy and does not make any sense sense. So yesterday at 11.39 a.m. when I had not spoken to, texted, or anything this guy in several days, he sends me McGann. So I've had some time to think these past couple days, and while I appreciate the effort, I don't feel this will ever go anywhere. I feel like I'm forcing something that isn't there. You can't demand someone not to block them ever again and be okay with me blocking my mother this past weekend. I should be allowed to establish boundaries for myself without getting judged, even if I have to set them with you and block you. You are overly anxious, and we don't have the same interests that are important to me. And when I want time alone, it does not mean blow up my phone several times. And yes, I do care about what your friends think of me, and the fact that they hate me will not make this any better. I am doing just fine on my own and have many things I want to focus on for myself next year. I feel like you've become almost obsessed with me that it actually makes me uncomfortable. So yes, I am blocking you, and yes, it's permanent this time. Please do not reach out to me on any platform ever again. Best of luck with your kids and your divorce. All right, now let me break down why this is insane and so much bull crap. McGann. So I had some time to think these past couple days, and while I appreciate the effort, I don't feel this will ever go anywhere. That could be the end of the discussion right there. That That's a whole statement. That is a whole, we're not going to work, not feeling it, goodbye. All right? That, that could have been the end. I feel like I'm forcing something that isn't there. Again, good place to end this. We don't need a whole elaborate goodbye. This could have been a, I don't like you anymore. We're done. That, that's it. I haven't known you that long. It's fine. But he doesn't end it there by saying, I don't feel like we're compatible. You know, it, it can't just be an amicable ending. He has to like try to dig screws into me and make me the problem. And, and just first of all, you know, he's acting like I am relentlessly trying to pursue him and, and force this relationship kind of thing on him. But he was the one that called me in tears 10 days before this, begging me to give him another chance and promising not to emotionally jerk me around anymore. And I gave him that chance. And you know what he did? Within two days, he turned ice cold on me all over again. And I kept putting up with it because he claims to be all alone in the world and wanting to unalive himself. So just this whole vibe of you're putting too much effort in me and this isn't going anywhere and I feel like I'm forcing something like you came to me. I was getting off the roller coaster ride. I've been seeing other people. And here in the next line, he goes, you can't demand someone not to block them ever again and be okay with me blocking my mother this past weekend. For context, his problem here is that I supported him for blocking his mother after she hurt him and was being very toxic to him. And apparently I should have yelled at him instead that he's not allowed to block his mother. It doesn't even make sense. It's not a rational statement that he's making. And the first half of that sentence where he's like, well, you can't demand someone not to block you. The whole issue with that was that he blocked me once and then came back later like everything was fine. So I told him that if he blocks me again, I'm done. That is a boundary that I set with him. Obviously, I cannot physically stop him from blocking me. It was a request to show me respect. And that plays into the next sentence, I should be allowed to establish boundaries for myself without getting judged, which I didn't judge him for setting boundaries with his mother. I supported him. So again, weird sword to fall on there, even if I have to set them with you and block you. Again, I never said he physically couldn't stop me like I was going to show up at his house. I said I'm not going to have anything else to do with him if he blocks me again. That is a boundary. And anytime I've set a boundary with him, it has become a challenge. So as you can see from this narcissistic text here, he has taken my 
do not block me or I will not talk to you as a challenge. And now he's blocked me. Or at least I assume he did. I didn't actually try to text him again to follow up. I was already, you know, working my way to be done with him. I was just trying to be nice and not abandon him over the holiday season because, you know, he keeps talking about wanting to hurt himself. And in my mind, I thought, well, if we get past the holidays, maybe he'll get over that slump and he'll at least be in a better state to where, you know, it's not so much togetherness being shoved down his throat. He could survive being on his own better at that point. But, you know, he beat me to it. That's fine. I, I don't even care that he said goodbye. It's just like the mean spirited way that he's done it. It just irks me. Then he says, you are overly anxious and we don't have the same interests that are important to me. Again, like I talked about in the other parts of my video, he is constantly changing his stance from one second to the next so that you can never be right, so that you can never figure him out, so that you can never, you know, win or resolve an argument. He just wants to argue for the sake of like venting. But this dude has depression, anxiety, insecurity issues, on and on and on. And I very much believe he has undiagnosed narcissism to boot. But he keeps harping on me because I have a phobia around people getting cut. And he was made aware of this phobia and then proceeded to play chopping videos on YouTube in front of me and then judge me and be mean to me and dump me because I reacted to those. Meanwhile, he has a phobia for horror games. And when he's jumping out of his skin for that, I did not judge him. I did not do anything negative to him. So he's allowed to be human. I am not allowed to be human or that's a deal breaker. Again, this dude was fake and abusive. He was not a keeper. And as to the other half of that sentence where he's saying, well, we just don't have the same interests that are important to me. When we first started talking to each other and I said, I think I was only looking for something more casual. He went, on and on and on about seeing all of this potential in me and how rare it is to find a girl with similar interests as him that like geek stuff and video games and toys and, and that, you know, it was his dream to have a couple's video game stream. He flat out told me after speaking to me on the phone once that he liked me more than the woman he had been married to. But now our interests suddenly don't match because that's a convenient thing that he can try to throw out at me. It, it doesn't make any sense. How did I go from being his perfect dream girl where all of our interests were aligned to, you know, we just like different things. Nothing has changed on my side. Then he says, and when I want time alone, it does not mean blow up my phone several times. Okay, I, I really want to clarify this because that sounds totally different than what happened. When I blew up his phone, I called him twice after he canceled our plans as I was literally driving to his house. And this is the second time that he's done that. He said, I want to be alone today, so don't come. And I called because I thought, okay, well, can we at least talk for a few minutes? Let me, you know, make sure you're in a good headspace that, you know, you're not going to hurt yourself like you keep talking about. And he refused to answer. So I texted him and requested to speak to him because, you know, I did not want to drive all the way home and then him call me in crisis and be like, no, I need you to come here. You know, I, I wanted to check on him and that would make me feel better to hear his voice. And maybe we could even talk a little bit while I'm driving home. It's a long drive for me. He did not say anything to me about, I'm mad at you. I don't want to talk to you. He just said, I want to be alone today. Okay, alone is a physical thing. It's not an I can't answer the phone thing. So after I asked him to, you know, talk to me on the phone for a couple minutes, I called him again because I thought maybe he was waiting for me to call and he would answer this time. He did not. But then he texted me saying he's fine and basically to leave him alone. So I did. I said, okay, you know, I don't want to bother you. So take care of yourself. And this breakup message is the first call text or anything since I sent that take care of yourself. So I don't see how I am blowing up his phone when he's so erratic and I am just trying to show actual human concern for this man. I could see him saying that I blew up his phone if I called 10 times in a row and I just was relentlessly leaving messages and I wouldn't leave it alone until he answered but I called twice. But anytime he calls me, whether I'm in a good mood or not, I answer for him because I don't want him to be upset or worried. But obviously he was not going to reciprocate that basic human respect and decent treatment. As soon as he was clear that he wasn't just feeling down today, that he just specifically did not want me to bother him, I left it alone. And yes, I do care what your friends think of me and the fact that they hate me will not make this any better. Okay, he has it in his head that my friends hate him and I don't know why. I, I don't know where this specifically came from, 
but there is nothing that I can say that will sway his mind and I have tried. The only thing even remotely close to this that I've ever said to him was after he blocked me everywhere and then unblocked me, I told him the next time I saw him that, you know, oh, I told so-and-so that I was coming here and she was like, no, don't you dare. And from that, he interpreted, oh, everybody you know hates me. So I, I can't handle that. This makes me tear up. I, I can't stand it. Everybody hates me. And he just constantly harps on that. And it's not even true. And I, I told him many times, even if that's how they feel, screw them. I mean, this is, you know, he and I are not about them. And if that's true that they hate him, it's because of how he treated me. So the best way to fix that is to prove them wrong. Be good to me. Be the decent guy that I keep insisting that you are. And I am no longer going to insist that you are because you clearly are not. I am doing just fine on my own and have many things I want to focus on for myself next year. All right, that's fine. But uh, again, you came to me begging me to give you another chance just 10 short days ago. And you were the one on the dating app matching with me and, and very enthusiastically coming after me and trying to make me take you seriously as a romantic partner. So why go through all this effort for something you don't even want? I feel like you've become almost obsessed with me that it actually makes me uncomfortable. This dude has nonstop been saying things about plans for our future together, asking to see my house, meet my kids, have them call him daddy, that his Zoom membership can easily become a family membership, that he wants to move in with me when his lease runs up in August. He talks about marrying me, wanting to have kids with me, asking me to be his his girlfriend way too fast, then getting mean and pretending he never said that when, you know, I don't take that bait and say, yes, yes, I will be your girlfriend. He's asking me if I would go on trips to Disney with him. I knew him for a week before he was asking me to bring him home to meet my parents for Thanksgiving. He wanted to make plans with me for Christmas. He tried to buy me very expensive things that I did not want him spending that kind of money on for, you know, we, you know, weren't even really in a relationship. I just met the guy. So he made me constantly uncomfortable but I thought maybe he just has all this love to give and nobody will give him a chance so he is just so desperate to find somebody that he can connect with and maybe if I calm down and and I can connect with him and we like each other enough he'll relax and the decent guy that I see you know hidden back in there will not have to feel like he has to put up all of these, let's do this, let's do that. And, you know, kind of try to razzle dazzle me into liking him. Maybe if he sees I like him for him, things will get better. But even though it made me uncomfortable, I really fought against letting his over enthusiasm be something that I held against him. And several times he abruptly went, bye forever, I just invented a reason to not like you anymore. And then he'd show back up a few days later feeling bad about his behavior. I mean, I would be with him in person and everything would feel fine. He'd be making more plans to meet up and asking me to do these long-term things with him. But the next day I'd text him like, hello, and he'd just be like, I don't like you anymore. Don't you ever just change your mind about things from time to time? And I think he did those abrupt goodbyes because, you know, he'd go on the dating app and find somebody new to be his girl toy. And when she didn't lean into his insanity right away, he'd, you know, get panicky and feel rejected and come to me to act as his security blanket. Last time he showed back up like that, it was 1030 at night. He's calling me crying and talking about self-harm to just emotionally drag me back into this drama with him. I felt like I couldn't say anything, but like, it's okay. You know, I forgive you. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Because I did not want him doing something stupid to be on my head. And he told me he was so sorry that he missed me so much and he wasn't going to emotionally jerk me around anymore. And it, it took all of like one or two days for that to become a lie. But when he has done this, I have always said my piece and then left him alone every time he's asked. I have shown him nothing but kindness and understanding. And every time I'd get over his roller coaster ride and my head would stop spinning, he would show back up and start the ride again before I could get off the stupid thing. I could never get a solid footing with him because it's like we were always playing a game and he was always changing the rules of what the game was. Several times he told me we're done and then showed back up to yell at me because of things like I mentioned having money to buy whatever I want in an Instagram post when he doesn't use Instagram, but somehow I did that to rub money in his face, even though he spends money very 
frivolously and recklessly. So why would I even guess that he has financial issues, let alone the issue of why is he cyber stalking me after he says he doesn't want to talk to me anymore? And I was already seen and talking to other people and I was really about to dump this guy after New Year's. I just, you know, didn't want him to feel alone for the holidays with how he keeps talking about, you know, being mentally unsound and wanting to end himself. I was trying to be a decent human being that cared about the fate of another human being. But there's only so much that a person can take, and I am well beyond that limit. I mean, I already had him blocked on everything but text messaging, and I only left that avenue open in case, you know, we got to New Year's Eve and he needed somebody to talk to in crisis. But even though I hadn't blocked his number yet, I had already deleted the contact out of my phone. So it would have just shown up as a random phone. Like he's not in my phone anymore. And my patience for his hot and cold behavior was definitely at an end. But I just, I, I find it baffling that he's saying I'm almost obsessed with him when I have done all these things to move away from him and I'm seeing other people and I keep trying to move on and he keeps swooping back. I mean, he has to be deflecting what he's doing and trying to throw it at me because I don't think, I don't think I'm being obsessive. I know I'm talking a lot about him right now, but that's part of my trauma response process to heal and make sense of it and get over this situation. Believe me, if I felt obsessive over him and I still wanted him and I wanted to be in his life, I would never ever make these videos. I only make videos about my narcissist when I am absolutely done and want nothing to do with them anymore. And, you know, the only reason they really get shared is that other people don't fall in the same pitfalls that I do, that I am the cautionary tale. So I get to process, I get to sort of grieve and let things go and make sense of it. And other people get to say, oh, wait, this guy I just met actually sounds just like this. I better run. If I can help one or two people avoid getting in a narcissistic relationship, then it's worth it to me. But me talking about this guy and these experiences are so that I can let it go and be done with it and sort of, you know, bury it and move on. But you know, I, I don't know, just like, how am I obsessive for being forgiving and caring with this guy's feelings? If I'm anything, it's angry at this point because I'm getting messed with. I'm having all these mind games thrown at me, this guy going up, down, left, right, hot, cold, and I just can't stand it. I don't feel like I have a solid footing on reality. My head is spinning. I'm tired. And really, it hurt when he said you know, I don't want to talk to you anymore and it's all your fault, but it's also such a relief. So yes, I'm blocking you and yes, it's permanent this time. I don't know if he means it or not, but he's not going to be able to get a hold of me. So it doesn't matter if he means it or not. Please do not reach out to me on any platform ever again. Don't worry, Bubba. I won't. Best of luck with your kids and your divorce. Oh, look, he finally said something halfway decent, like a nice human being. It's uh, not good enough to salvage the absolute dumpster fire that this guy is. Actually, wait, wait, I'm cutting in from the future here. While editing, I decided that it's really not fair that I did didn't get a few days to construct my own goodbye message to this guy. So I've done that. And since he has me blocked everywhere so I can't talk to him privately, I'm more than happy to share my last thoughts with the internet. So here goes. After you stopped messing with my head and I could think clearly again, I realized you're too boring for me. You're not smart enough to hold a conversation or my interest. And you're self-centered with no empathy for anyone but yourself, unless you're being manipulative. You're sulky, have severe anger issues, constantly lie, and actively want to be miserable for attention. And your nice guy act is a fake mask because you're a vulnerable narcissist who poisons everyone around them and sucks all joy out of their lives. Oh, and your dick is way too small for you to have this much attitude. You will ruin the lives of anyone who gets close to you, so may they always have the good sense to run away screaming as I should have the minute your crazy started showing. Take care of yourself, or don't. I'm not your mom or your emotional hostage anymore. And I don't care if that comes across bitter. I do feel bad for the guy, but ultimately he had no right to treat me as nasty as he has. There is no excuse. There is no justification for that. All right, let's cut back into the original video. I, I mean, still, even to this moment where I'm so frustrated, I'm so done, I feel bad for him in a lot of ways because I think... Any girl he does find, he's just going to make them miserable until they leave him. So he's always going to be alone. 
I don't think he has the capacity to change. I because I, I don't think he's self aware enough to realize what he's doing or that it's not normal. I think he is in such a raw state. And he doesn't know how to heal and he doesn't he, he doesn't know how to function. And it's a really sad way to live. And like I said, at the end of my other videos, if the nice guy that I originally met, you know, even being overly enthusiastic and overbearing and, and making me nervous that, you know, he wanted more from me than I was able to give. If that nice guy had been genuine and he had been consistent and he had been, you know, there and present, I would have totally ended up falling in love with that guy and being there for that guy. And, you know, maybe we would have lived a happily ever after. Maybe we wouldn't have. But I, I mean, this guy is so poisonous. He is going to ruin anybody that comes near him. But he's so hard headed. He's already convinced himself that it, it doesn't matter. But he wants people, but then they don't matter. But then he wants people, but then they don't matter. And it, it just it makes me so sad. I've dealt with greater narcissists where it's just like, I hope every bad thing that happens to you, you know, comes your way. You've earned it. You've deserved it. You've hurt people on purpose. But I, I don't think this guy has any control or regulation over his emotions. And that just seems like such a terrible way to live. And I, I do. I feel bad for him. I don't like him. I don't want to talk to him anymore. But I feel very sad for him as as a person. I feel a lot of sympathy and empathy for him. And uh, I realize I say that and it feels a little bit hypocritical because I'm about to put the situation on blast in front of the entire internet for whoever wants to watch it. But that's that's what it is. That's what this whole channel is. This is me trying to help other people not get as hurt as I get and break these cycles of abuse. But I hope that this has been helpful for somebody. It's been cathartic for me to get it off my chest and put it out onto the, you know, World Wide Web. And I'd like to encourage you, if you have had similar situations, sit down and speak up because silence is abuse's best friend. And that's another reason that I like to do these videos and very authentically and candidly talk about my experiences because e even if they don't help anybody else at the end of the day, it helps me. It helps me move on and it helps me feel better. And that's all that I really need to worry about is what makes me happy. And that's what I'm going to try very hard to do in the future of dating. But um, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. And my normal last piece of advice here, always do what's best for yourself first because the narcissist is always going to do what's best for themselves first.